Thank you. My name is Sali Atanga. I am a post-harvest uh, scientist here at Africa Rice. Um, during the South Sea project, um, we, we, are, we have done a lot of things. Uh, one of them is we try to analyze the value chain and understand wh what, are, what, is the main, what are the main issues behind losses, losses in terms of grain losses and also in terms of quality loss. This was done in several countries and we now have a clear indication that there's a lot of losses ha happening at the level of harvesting. Late harvesting being one of the main problems, you know, and up, up to about 23% of grains are lost uh, due to late harvesting. And uh, we think that uh, we have seen that mechani mechanizing this process is one of the most important steps to take in order to cut down these losses. Um, we also saw that threshing, threshing is, is also there's a lot of about 5% of the grains are lost during threshing and also mechanizing this process using our acid threshers are also uh, one of the things that we are proposing as uh, ways of reducing losses. And then finally we saw a lot of losses in terms of parboiling. Countries that are doing parboiling like Nigeria, we also saw about 6.5% losses in grains. So. Now we, de we have developed several uh, techniques and m technologies uh, to reduce these losses. Uh, and one of those technologies, as I say, we talk about harvesting, reducing harvesting losses. The technologies that we are proposing for harvesting losses have been mainly reapers. There are some work being done on combined harvesters. Now the reapers are in the field. We people are now using them in Nigeria. We are using them uh, in, in, uh, in, in Senegal. Uh, in terms of... Um, Threshing losses, uh, we, we have a lot of acid threshers now in Nigeria, in Senegal River Valley, and they are doing, the, 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 if you look at in all the countries that we have been able to survey, we found that these countries where sad SC project intervened, we actually see a great reduction in those losses, especially in the sites where this pro, the, the, the project uh, intervened. Uh, in terms of parboiling, we, 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 we did develop the, the jumper boiling technology, which we have introduced in Nigeria and in Benin. And there also we have seen great reduction in losses. This technology combines the uniform steam distribution mechanism and also employs good drying surfaces and coupled with training of the stakeholders. So all these aspects put together I'm creating linkages with these stakeholders, let them understand the idea behind quality, then they, they begin to work together and we see the, quali the, the rice quality going up and the losses also dropping. So these are, these are, these are some of the, as the things that we have been able to achieve on the South SE project. One other very important aspect has been um, the, the notion of nutrition. Nutrition, getting uh, rice that is of high nutritional quality. You know, parboiling in itself helps to improve the nutritional quality of the rice. And, uh, but that notwithstanding, we are also looking for varieties, we are able to identify some varieties that have some nutritional benefits, higher protein levels, higher mineral levels, higher uh, minerals and proteins, I say minerals and proteins, and also um, lower digestibility. So we have identified, and one of these varieties is Nerica 7. I will not, it, it, this is a variety that we, we have screened among a population of Nericas, and we have seen that it has these very, very unique factors. I think this is one of the work of our PhD student, and we hope that he defends the, the work. So uh, this is uh, what the SAT SC has been able to, uh, to do. But more importantly, we have done a lot of training, training of private sector in terms to manufacture the equipment and put it in the market because if if we, this was very important for us to do uh, especially in terms of fine-tuning it working with them let them understand the basis of the technology and then from there they can understand how to correct and then make it available to, to, to the market this has happened for the acid treasure this has happened in Nigeria Flimpong is doing a very a great job in Nigeria under the mechanization task force they have done a great job in terms of Bring, pushing the ASI, uh, make it available to, to, to the local population, even reducing the size of the ASI, make it more, more, afford, more affordable and also make it uh, more user-friendly to women who, who are using this technology. The same thing for, 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 uh, for, for the jumper boiling, 
in Benin. We have done a lot of work with the private sector. TCMS is fabricating a lot of these systems, both for large-scale producers and for medium-sized producers. So, um, also one other aspect is the use of rice byproducts. This is another big achievement in the, in the South Essie project where we, 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 we worked with some of our partners to bring in new stoves, new gas fire stoves, and we have modernized, we have modified the stoves, and then they can use direct husk for cooking. Okay, this helps to reduce uh, pressure on the forest, especially when many people are relying on wood and charcoal for, 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 for cooking energy. Um, now we're also working on producing briquettes from husk, rice husk, and also seeing the potential of using rice husk as uh, a, a, a farm, a farm rep a soil replenishing uh, uh, material. So all these are in the pipeline. And all. So what are our perspectives? What do we hope to do in, uh, in, in the nearest future? First, the first issue is to get more private people involved, get the pri we want to get more private sector involved in the fabrication of the technologies. That's the first thing, and then we we need to. This will help us to outscale, you know, into into in, in a large amount of into a large in a large way, and also training training of end users on how to use the technologies because this is a very important component. For the training of extension service people, training of end users, both at the local communities, trying to identify in each community, on each rice production site, what are the critical factors that, can, that are important in improving quality and also reducing losses. Because some of these things, some of these things is not just a one one, sh one shop. It's not a blanket recommendation. We need to understand at each major production sites, what are the critical factors that are influencing losses and then work on them with the actors to actually uh, remove those bottlenecks and then pick it up. We see a lot of, a lot of uh, enthusiasm, a lot of enthusiasm in Nigeria around the gem. We see a lot of enthusiasm in Nigeria and in other places around acid treasure, using acid treasure. We see a lot of enthusiasm around rice-based products because of the low grade for example, some, some people, some, 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 some people have not had the opportunity to be exposed to our technologies, still produce low-grade rice, broken rice. So we also go to train them on how to use, to add the value of this rice. For example, making rice-based products, making um, rice with combinations, products with rice with combinations. This has helped to increase the value, in some cases, of up to, of up to 65%. Of the, of the broken rice. A lot of work has been done in terms of improving the quality of local rice. Now we did some work further to find out in the market why, what are the main, the critical factors that were driving prices uh, in terms of quality. What, what are the critical quality parameters that were in, in, involved in rice prices. And we observed that there were three important factors. There's the head rice, that is the amount, the percentage of whole grains. We had um, the, 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 the shape of the grains, longer grains, slender grains were more priced higher and also um, the impurities, le lower levels of impurities uh, were priced higher. So we had, had these three factors, were the physical factors that we identified. And among the local rice varieties, we found that this, this, these three parameters were very where it would, where, where, where in terms of the high impurities, high, uh, low brokings, and the greens were not of slender shape. So what, what we have done so far in terms of our work is to try to see how to work with our local partners to make sure that we have these quality attributes in place to improve the image or to improve the, the, the price of our local rice. And this is happening in the field. When we, when, we, when we recommend the kinds of varieties, for example, for parboiling or for milling as white grains, we make sure that we are recommending varieties that in, 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 the, in, the, in the processing aspect of it will produce grains that have this quality, this, this, this quality parameters that will favor improved prices in the market. The other thing we observed was that people like grains that swell, okay, it's high swelling ratios, uh, grains that um, cook fast. 
So these are two parameters also that we saw that in the influencing prices in the market. So also, parboiling in itself helps to, 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 to improve this. So in, in, in our work, we have actually seen that uh, wo uh, working with, our, with the, the, the local actors in the field using improved parboiling technology, using better rice uh, uh, varieties, we have been able to improve the image of local rice in terms of quality and also improve the price. So people are not just buying the rice because it is clean, but also because they like the taste and also it cooks fast and also it is swelling. So these this three aspects, these this aspects were very important in our work. And what we are seeing is we are now also giving some advice to our breeding program. We're also giving this information to our breeding program and telling them, okay, this is what we need to be breeding for in terms of local rice. We have, we have looked across the markets from Ghana, Cameroon, Uganda, and Benin. And this is the tendency. We have seen this where it is a structure. This is what people are looking for. So all our breeding programs should integrate this in in, in in their work and i think in so doing we can actually improve the image of locally produced rice the other aspect is the processing chain the processing chain manual processing as i say manual if you do manual processing or using a, using traditional methods in processing you there is no there is a little chance that you can get the kind of quality that would compete with imported rice so what we need to do is to mechanize the post-harvest processing you know, part of production that is from harvesting to milling. And in, even in milling, the right types of meals need to be installed especially using combined meals. Meals that are integrated would have, uh, they, they, they have a, a paddy cleaner, they have both a dehusker and a polisher, and then that can grate the rice and also color sort. So these are, these are the kinds of meals that we need to be installing in the field so that they can actually improve the quality of our local rice. No, I, I, I would say this. Even in the developed countries, we can have rice, rice with spots, grains with spots. What would, can reduce move spots from, from, from any rice sample is sorting. And when we sort the rice, you, you, you can actually improve on the quality. When we, every, every meal rice will have some broken, some level of brokens. Now, I would, I would say that we have been able to develop a parboiling technology. Gem parboiling technology can actually reduce the breakage to between 10 and 5% in the sample. But now if you sort, you can sort to even get to 5% because most of people want uh, whole grains at 5, uh, uh, broken at 5% in their, in, in their rice. So we can do sorting to uh, grading to, to, to have that kind of sample. So this is what we have able to do. This is a, so it's a combination of, of aspects from variety through processing through uh, and then the proper cooking, I mean proper cooking methods because we have to teach people how to cook rice. Some people don't know how to cook rice. For example, people don't know that. Some people don't know that they have to wash rice before they cook. People say, oh, there's sun in my rice. No, you have to wash your rice. My grandmother told me, you know, when you take rice, you have to wash it in a particular manner so that you make sure that there's decantation, the, the grain sediment, and then you can take your rice out. So this, these are all things that are integrated in, 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 in what we do so that we can improve, first of all, the competitiveness of our local rice and also create more awareness in what we are doing, encourage more people to consume local rice around the continent.